Okay, whoever had that, I think uh, one, I will allow them to introduce themselves, uh, and we will alternate uh, at, with questions at, after that point. So whoever has number one. All right. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Emily Jensen. I am the DFL endorsed candidate from 13A for the State House. Um, but to get to know me a little better, you should know that I grew up in a rural community. I'm from Marshall, Minnesota. I went through high school there. I came up to St. Joe about five years ago, um, step, decided to stay with that small town atmosphere because I loved it so much. And so from there I studied political science, I studied international relations, and that brought me to do some community development work in Bosnia, and I taught in Cambodia for a while, so quite, quite different. But I now work uh, for a group home in St. Joe through Opportunity Matters, and I work with cognitively and physically disabled adults. It's by far one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. I also coach swimming for the YMCA out of St. Cloud. I coach at St. John's though, so I coach a lot of recorded girls. And I also coach speech for Sartell, which is in 13B, but I still like them all the same. Um, and, and so the reason I decided to get into this race was because I thought we needed a choice. And we weren't having a choice. So they asked me, you know, do you want to run? And I said, uh, no, no, no. And I, I tried to do that shirk the responsibility onto someone else, but we got to May, we got to the CD6 convention, and we still didn't have a candidate. And so they asked me again, and I said, okay. So at the beginning of the day, I was definitely not running. By the end of it, I was in full, straight, full swing campaign mode. Um, and so I've been in, running ever since. And if you meet me on the campaign trail, I will talk about youth engagement all the time, because I feel very strongly that we need to get young people involved in politics. And not just tell them that, hey, we're the party of the youth, so you should vote for us. Because what makes party uh, a youth party if we don't actually listen to them? So you'll see that I'm young, and I think that's a great thing. I think we need some fresh voices in St. Paul. And I think we need to activate young people to care and to see what the repercussions of voting are and of not voting. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you. Taking up your time to come here and listen to us and actually getting educated on making a choice. My name is Jeff Howe. I'm the uh, current state representative here for 13, 13A. So, a uh, little about me. I, I live in Rockville, Minnesota. I uh, was on the Rockville City Council there. Spent the uh, majority of my time in the fire service. I spent 30, uh, well, 27 years in the fire service. Uh, some of that time was full time with St. Cloud. Some full time at Wake Park. I spent 19 years in the volunteer force there in Rockville. I've also uh, spent a great deal of time in the military. I've got 35 years' experience as, a, as an officer in the, in the National Guard. Been deployed a few times. Uh, I've been a transportation officer. So transportation is near and dear to my heart. I uh, move tons of equipment all over the world, and, and it's been a, a good experience. My wife and I have been married for, well, next week will be 30 years. We raised four children there in Rockville, and uh, three of them, the three boys, three boys and one girl, three of them followed me into the service, so I've got three boys in the, uh, in the Army National Guard. My daughters uh, attend St. Cloud State for a master's degree. You know, I, uh, I've been involved in, in, uh, in politics for the great majority of my life, and, one mode or another, and I think it's important that we have a strong voice down in St. Paul, and I and I think that we need to what we need to do is keep people first, and that's the main thing. That's the reason we're down there because people come, and if they have problems, I think it's important that you you have an open door. People call you up, you take their matters serious, and you try to find a solution. Thank you very much. We look forward to the debate. Okay, our first question for our state candidates. What is your plan to deal with the state budget? Important to know what the state budget looks like. Uh, 
whether we got a deficit or whether we got a surplus. But I think regardless of which way it is, I think we need to identify our priorities. I, I, and I don't think the last two years we did a very good job in the legislature identifying priorities. I think key to our priorities is, one is transportation. I think transportation in rural Minnesota has been shortchanged by this metro-centric legislature focusing on light rail, focusing on, this, on the metro area. We have been shortchanged. Our, we, I was kind of amazed that they came up with some funding for at the last minute for 94 and for Highway 23 when all the money was gone. And all of a sudden, the pools aren't looking real, real good sometimes, and all of a sudden, where did this money come from? They found it. I think we need to dig a little bit deeper in MnDOT and really look to see where those efficiencies are and try to find some more money for greater Minnesota. The other thing I think we need to do is, is identify some more funding resources for transportation, such as sales tax on auto, automobile repair parts, truck repair parts, because if we're already collecting that, those sales tax. Let's dedicate them to transportation. Another piece of the trans another piece of the budget we need to look at is making sure that we take care of our local nursing homes in rural Minnesota. Last year we fought hard to give them a five percent increase, and as we fought hard to give them a five percent increase, and we said, "Look at this nice shiny object over here." We increased their responsibilities and their and their regulations by twenty percent. They lost fifteen percent. They thanked us for us. We got to fix that problem because we've got we're losing beds out here in rural Minnesota, and we got to take it. We got to prioritize education is another one, but I'm out of time. We'll talk about that later. Thank you. Um, so the pretty neat thing and a pretty promising thing is that Jeff and I agree that transportation needs to be a priority. I would say that we did prioritize last session because education matters. There's a bunch of ladies over there who probably would say their education matters and we should prioritize their education. And that's what we did the last session. But this next session, we need to prioritize transportation. Um, there's some talk about finding money in different places and shifting it. Well, we just did, we just paid back the last shift we did. Um, and, our, and our schools pay for that. Um, and so we need to find new revenue for our transportation systems because construction costs have gone up 70% since 2004 and since 1988 our purchasing power has gone down 30%. So we're, we're working against the grain here. Snow and ice removal in Minnesota costs $137 million per year, per season I should say. Um, and so we've got to come up with another source of revenue. Um, people talk about the gas tax. Well. That might be viable, but, you know, as our cars become more efficient, the revenue from a gas tax goes down. So we really need to reach across the aisle to work with Republicans, to work with Democrats, to really prioritize our needs and then our ide ideology second. Um, and I would also like to see some funding towards, go towards vocational, technical, and practical uh, job applications because there's a skilled worker shortage. Why are we not prioritizing our students so that they're the most competitive in the state. We have the opportunity to do that. I mean, we have a bunch of rural schools in this district and they are very, very good at welding, electricity, mechanic work. But we're telling them, no, 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 no. There's only one path. You're going to go to that four-year liberal arts school and that's the only path to success. But it's not because there is so much success that can come out of vocational training and technical training. And we really need to help our students find those pathways to success. Thank you. Second question, how do you plan on dealing with the number of local units, which is local units to be city and school, that are relying upon funding from the state? Okay, so it's no surprise that we feel like the urban schools in the cities get a better cut, um, because it's true. We had 10 years of the gap between urban and rural schools increasing by 67%. Uh, that's not okay. I mean, our students deserve to be at the top, like I said just a couple seconds ago. Um, and in this last legislative session, we actually 
turn that around. So in the next two years, we're going to decrease that gap by a third. We need to keep that going. Failed levies and failed referendums do not dictate the success of our students. Um, we shouldn't be put up for a new roof that we need so our students don't have to come to school with wet floors, a ruined gym floor, and their electronics way out of date. We really need the state to come forward. We don't have the tax space here to rely on for our school funding. Um, and so the state really needs to step in and, and offer us, as rural school participants, the funding that we need to stay at the same level as those urban schools. And quite frankly, I think we can exceed them a little bit. So, well, I, I hope you agree, and I, I'm sure we'll talk about education later. So thank you. Well, I, I truly believe that uh, when we talk about city budgets and school budgets, the thing that happens is most of us out here in rural Minnesota have property. Our property tax values are low compared to those tax fees property tax rich areas down in the metro area. And I think what we need to do is we need to look at making sure that LGA is used properly for and, and used for the right things. Should be going for fire departments, public safety, public safety, police departments, fire departments, ambulance services. We need to take that LGA, make sure it's properly used for that. When we look at school funding, school funding is, a, is truly, when you go down to the legislature and try to ask and figure out how school funding is figured out, there's one guy in the entire state that knows how that really works and can understand school funding. If he drops off the face of the earth, we're all in trouble. So we need to simplify that process and make sure that our students out here in rural Minnesota that are getting somewhere between six dollars and $8,000 a pupil, while the schools down there in, in the cities are getting between thirteen and sixteen thousand dollars a pupil. We need to fix that. We do an excellent job of, of fixing our achievement gap here. We need to take those success stories and apply it down there in the metro area. Uh, we know how to fix it here. We, we've been fairly successful out here on on fixing that gap process. But I will tell you that that, uh, that funding mechanism and education needs to be fixed. I think LGA is important. It just needs to be applied to the right places. Thank you. When it comes to the rising cost of health insurance, what role do you see yourself playing as a member of the Minnesota Legislature? Well, health insurance is a big issue, and we've all faced what Minsure has done in the past year. It's helped some folks, but and it's hurt others. Minnesota had the best health health care in the nation. I think we could have found an easier way to make things work instead of doing what we did. Uh, I do believe we needed an insurance exchange. I don't believe we needed to do and spend the money that we spent on Minsure. Uh, but I think what we need to do is we need to make Minsure more responsive, much more simpler. And I believe that the way to cut health care costs is to, instead of just allowing Minnesota companies to compete, let's open it up and let everybody in the nation compete. I think competition is good in that respect. Right now, you've got to be a nonprofit to be an insurance company in the state of Minnesota. Well, we can continue to have just nonprofits compete, but let's open it up through all the nonprofits as long as they meet our criteria in the state. Let them compete for that insurance rule. And let's open that up. Competition would be good. I think we'd all save some money. And I, I do believe that that would be the right answer. Uh, but uh, health insurance is a tough one. But Minsure definitely needs to have an overhaul to make it work for everyone. We, uh, uh, I, I received numerous phone calls on, on Minsure and, and the issues, and we worked tirelessly to fix that. But I, I am appalled that when we're coming into this, that they have really no thought process on how uh, renewals are going to work. And uh, they need to put somebody with some insurance 
uh, background in there so they understand what the heck we're looking at. So thank you. When we go to door to door, Ann and I, or whoever else is out volunteering with me, we hear a lot of success stories about nature, about people who were unable to have health insurance, and now for the first time in their life, whether that's 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, they get supplemental insurance or they get insurance for the first time. And that's a great success story. Um, and I won't lie, nature has some, some wrinkles. It definitely has some wrinkles. 140,000 uh, people dropped off their insurance plans. It's not a secret, we all know about it. Um, but we need to work to get those people back into their insurance plans. Um, these insurance plans were the bare bones, they didn't meet the criteria. Well, we should be doing everything possible to get them onto an insurance plan that meets their needs. Um, and so the question is, what role do you see yourself playing as a member of the Minnesota legislature when it comes to health insurance? Well, first of all, helping the 140,000 people get onto an insurance plan, ironing out those wrinkles. It's also about the people who are eligible for Medicaid getting their Medicaid. We have to fix the problems and make sure that I mean, scorched earth policy does not help anything. We have to keep fixing it. It's a new program. We have to keep fixing it. We have to keep working with it. We have to keep helping the people. It could help, but don't know how uh, to get onto those plans. And as a representative, that means coming into your district and telling your, rep uh, telling your constituents how this works, how it can help them, and how you yourself are going to help them out. Um, and that's what the role I see myself playing in this miniature debate. Um, is really working with it and making it work for the people of 13A. Thanks.